Greetings. In today's video, I have some Excel wizardry to share with you. We are diving into the world of absolute, relative, and mixed cell referencing. Now, before you get overwhelmed, let me assure you, it's not as technical as it sounds. Picture this. You've got a spreadsheet full of sales numbers for various hubs across various quarters. We want to crunch the numbers. And that's where the magic of referencing comes in. I will guide you on when to make those numbers stay put in terms of absolute cell referencing, when to let them wander or move around in terms of relative cell referencing, and even a mix of both, which is mixed referencing. It's like giving yourself Excel superpowers. So grab your spreadsheets and let's embark on a quick and easy journey into these referencing tricks. By the end of this video or tutorial, you will be on your way to making Excel your best friend. There are three kinds of cell references that you can use in Excel. We have the relative cell references, absolute cell references, and mixed cell references. Understanding these different types of cell references will help you work with formulas and save time, especially when copy-pasting formulas. Now, let's explore further with detailed examples to better understand each type of cell referencing in Excel and how to effectively use them in your own Excel work. I am going to use this simple example to explain the concept of relative cell references. We have sales information for these different types of hubs for each quarter. First thing we are asked to do is to get the total for the year for each hub. So I'm going to go to this cell and I'm going to use the shortcut key Alt and equal sign. This automatically inserts the sum formula and it's kind of smart because it realizes where it has numbers and it sums those values. So in this case, it's correct. I will just press enter. Now, instead of entering the formula for all the cells individually, I'm going to push this down by double clicking on the hedge here. Let's take a look at our formula. If I click on the first row here, and I click inside the formula, it's summing B3 to E3. Now, if I go to the last one here and I click inside the formula, you can see that it's summing B10 to E10. This is called relative referencing because the reference cells are moving down. They automatically adjust to refer to the corresponding row as my formula moves down. Now, let's say my boss comes to me and says, give me the percentage of each hub in comparison to the total for the year. The first thing I need to do is to calculate the total. So I am going to come down here and again, use the same shortcut key combination, Alt and equal sign. Just like I pointed out before, Excel is smart. This time, it notices that it has numbers on top, so it's going to sum those. All I have to do is press enter. Now comes the tricky part of calculating the percentage. I am going to come here, type in the equal sign, click on the first total for the fitness hub, and divide that by the total here. I'm going to change this to a percentage by clicking on here. Now, can I pull this down just like I did before? Well, let's try it. I run into a problem. Why? Let's click inside the formula and it says this divided by this, right? So the total value here is shifted down, which is correct because this percentage should reflect the language learning hub, but the overall total for all the hubs shouldn't move down. I need that to be fixed. This is when you need absolute referencing. So what it means is that you need to add dollar signs to the row as well as to the column reference. And you can do that quickly by using the shortcut key F4. That automatically puts in the dollar sign. You can of course also put in the dollar sign yourself. You don't have to use the shortcut key. 
it's just much faster to use the shortcut key. Let's take a pause here for a quick tip. If you click on F4 once, you get the dollar sign for both column as well as the row. If you click on it again, you get the dollar sign only for the row. And once more, it puts the dollar sign only for the column. And click it again, it goes back to relative referencing. We are going to see the mixed referencing part in a second and why you might need it. So when I press enter now and I drag this down, I get the formula to work properly because we have dollar signs included in the formula. A dollar symbol when added in front of the row and column numbers makes it absolute. That is, it stops the row and a column number from changing when copied to other cells. So when I'm here, you can see that this part is relative. It does not have dollar signs. And the second part of this formula is fixed to the cell. Now, let's say my boss comes to me again and says, calculate the sales percentage for each quarter for each half so we can easily identify which quarters yield the highest and the lowest sales for each half what i'm going to do is to copy this information by clicking on ctrl c and go here to paste it now i'm going to remove these figures because instead of numbers i want to see percentages here And that percentage is going to be the value I have in each of the quarters for all of the halves divided by the total yearly sales for the halves. So what do we need here? Relative, absolute, or mixed referencing? Let's test that out first. I am going to say this equals this number, which is the Q1 sales for the fitness hub, divided by this number representing the total yearly sales for the fitness hub right can i leave this like this not really i mean for this value it's going to work but when i pull this over what happens to this the same thing that happened before when we calculated the totals here these numbers will keep shifting this way i don't want it to shift so I need it to consistently pick the total yearly sales for the fitness hub and not move to the side. So do I need to use full referencing here? That is the absolute referencing. We will try that out. I'm going to click on F3 here and press F4 to get it fully fixed to F3. Now I'm going to pull this over here and let's take a look. Let's go into the cell. This looks great, right? Just as we want it. It has this cell, which is the Q2 sales for the fitness hub divided by the total yearly sales. So this is perfect. Let's try to pull this down for the other hubs. Is this a report? Can I truly give this to my boss? Let's check. Is this correct? No, cause it doesn't even add up to 100%, right? So there's something wrong here. Let's just click on this cell, click on the formula, and we can see that it's taking this number, that part is correct, but it's dividing it by the total for the fitness hub. We don't want that. And it's doing it because we fully fixed the reference to F3, so that doesn't move at all. But we do want it to partially move, right? So what part of this do we want to move? The row part, right? because we want the row number three to become four since we are on row four and then to become five and so on therefore the parts that you want to move shouldn't have a dollar sign the dollar sign is for the parts that you want fixed so right here what do we need fixed we want the column to be free and we want f to be fixed that shouldn't move to g to h and so on it should always stay on f but we want the row to move. This means that the dollar sign stays with the part that we want fixed, so it stays with half. And I'm going to remove the dollar sign from the row here. Now, if I pull this across and we pull this down, we get it to work properly. 
And the way you can test this is to always go to the end of your data set and just double check that your formula referencing is correct. So in this case, it's dividing this by this, which is correct. And here we are using mixed cell referencing. That is how you can use absolute, relative and mixed cell referencing in Excel. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to receive updates when new videos come out, consider subscribing. Thank you.